uh, over the course of the program in the past 10 years and some of the things that we've done to get the program back on track. Metro is the uh, regional government for the Portland area and about uh, two dozen surrounding communities. Uh, we're responsible for solid waste planning, waste reduction planning, and we also have some operational responsibilities running a couple of uh, transfer stations. About 10 years ago, the city of Portland wanted to move forward with uh, commercial food scraps recovery and approached Metro um, <clears throat> because we, since we run the transfer stations, they were going to need us to partner with them to get a contract in place and move the material through our stations to a processor. So we went through a, a procurement process and ultimately contracted with Cedar Grove Composting. Um, they're a Seattle-based company and uh, they proposed to transport the material from uh, Portland 170 miles north to a facility outside of Seattle as a short-term solution and the longer-term solution was to eventually site a facility in the Portland area. Early on, we made the decision to include a number of non-food items, largely wax corrugated boxes and compostable serviceware. And we did that because at the time, we, we thought it was important to add those materials to get at the food scraps that were the focus of the program. But we also did so because we didn't think the amount of material was really going to be a problem, and Cedar Grove had told us that they had successfully processed those materials and they wouldn't be a problem to include them in the stream. So fast forward five years, and uh, unfortunately Cedar Grove had still not been able to site a facility in the Portland area. And I think probably the primary reason for that is because we have very restrictive land use rules in Oregon that make it very difficult to site a composting facility. But we were pleased to learn that Recology had purchased a yard debris composting facility about 20 miles away from Portland, and their plan was to make upgrades to that site so that food scraps could be processed there. By 2010, the program had grown to about 1,000 businesses, um, mostly all within Portland, and the suburban communities were now looking at joining the program. Uh, we got a bit more good news when Republic Services announced that they got approval to process food scraps at their facility about 70 miles south, PRC, Pacific Region Compost, outside of Corvallis. And uh, in October of that year, Recology then acquired the contract from Cedar Grove Composting. They chose to continue to move the material up to Cedar Grove, but they wanted to eventually bring it to the Nature's Needs site in North Plains as soon as they could get the facility fully permitted to do so. Well, the next year, they, they did get that approval from the State Department of Environmental Quality to process food scraps at that site. And so just a month later, they redirected that material to that site. So that saved about 150 miles in hauling one way. But then we had a very interesting development and in the city of Portland announced a number of changes to the residential program that, that had major impacts on the whole uh, composting infrastructure in the region. Uh, first of all, uh, recycling had been weekly for residences and that remained weekly. Um, but trash collection went from uh, weekly to every other week and organics collection at that point was just yard debris went from um, went from every other week to weekly and with that residents could now place food scraps in the container well metro didn't support that a uh, transition at that time because we felt like we didn't have the processing infrastructure in place to really deal with all this material because as soon as the food scraps went into the yard debris that stream could no longer go to a site permitted just to process yard debris. It had to go to a type three food waste processing facility, and we just didn't have enough capacity in the region at that time to handle that. So we, we thought we'd have problems, and within a matter of weeks, we did. And we had significant odor problems at Nature's Needs because all of a sudden, the city flipped the switch on that program on October 31st, and by early December, the site was completely overwhelmed with our commercial material as well as the residential material. We had odor problems and uh, unfortunately an atmospheric inversion set in and created incredible odor problems that concentrated those odors at the ground. And citizens of North Plains were extremely upset and filed hundreds of complaints against the facility. 
going to skip that slide and come back to that. Um, also in 2011, staff was directed to get a new contract in place um, for commercial organics processing. And we were still operating un under the old 2005 Cedar Grove contract. And so we went through a procurement process. And interestingly, we, we added the provision to that contract that would allow us to pay a higher rate for anaerobic digestion if that was a, a processing method utilized by Recology. And we did that because we anticipated a wet AD facility was going to be built right in Portland. And we thought that adding that provision to the contract was a way to help build some more capacity in the region. Um, but things got more interesting in January of the following year, 2013, when the Washington County Commissioners, due to all the pressure from the citizens of North Plains, voted to prohibit any processing of commercial organics at nature's needs. And so that put Recology in a jam, it put us in a jam as well, and they started to move the material north into Washington State with one-way hauls of 228 to 255 miles each for these two facilities, uh, Lens Enterprises and Royal Organics. But in April, uh, Recology surprised us with a signed uh, supply agreement to a new anaerobic digestion facility, a wet digester that was under construction in Eugene, uh, just about 110 miles south of Portland. And um, we, um, we approved that uh, because ultimately when that facility would become operational later on in the summer, that material would go to that facility. And at the same time, we were working on trying to come to some kind of regional consensus as to what should be in the commercial program and what should not. And we could not reach consensus. We got all the stakeholders together, but we could not come to a, a consensus on that issue. So that process failed. So in July of 2013, uh, the facility, JC Bio, became operational and Recology started diverting the material up there. But uh, JC Bio officials immediately raised concerns about the quality of the material, complaining about excessive contaminants and too many non-food items. Uh, wax corrugated cardboard was particularly problematic in the front end of the system. It just wouldn't go through the bio separator very well. So this was kind of a chance for us to take a step back and evaluate and, and look at the program at that point, recognizing that we no longer had a local processor. We knew that transporting material over 200 miles one way was not sustainable. We had no consensus on a new regional standard. Our latest processor, JC Bio, was not happy with the quality of the material. And our biggest concern was that if we didn't clean it up, uh, we may lose our processors. We may not even get someone to bid on this stuff again if we need to go through another procurement process. So we uh, unilaterally made the decision for material coming to the main Metro Central Station that, as of November of last year, could no longer contain wax or regular corrugated cardboard. And then just 17 days ago, we imposed the second part of the standard, um, and that uh, excludes all uh, non-food items, with exception of coffee filters, tea bags, and BPI certif certified compostable bags. We did a lot of outreach, a lot of outreach to the generators, to the haulers, and we even uh, provided a written feedback to the haulers on every single load that was coming in, and uh, uh, site visits and technical assistance. But I'm really pleased to say that this transaction, this transition has gone exceptionally well. Um, uh, as of uh, today, we've only rejected about, uh, I think, about four loads so far this month, and that's out of typically around somewhere around 350 loads received per month. Um, material looks much better. Our processors are a lot happier. Um, I say processors because most of it goes to JC Bio. A small amount does go to a composting facility. And um, finally, I think we've got the stream to a point where it's really an asset now and not a liability. So that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Does anybody have yes. any questions for Bruce? So what's what's happening now with your paper cups and your pizza boxes? Well, they're they're not allowed to be included in the program. So I assume uh, businesses are innovating as far as finding ways to get rid of or not use single-use single items, or they're ending up in the trash. 
uh, I have to say we, we have seen a decrease in the volume of the material coming in. So we know that we've lost some folks. We, we think that that's, that was inevitable, but I'm hoping they eventually come back into the program with a cleaner stream. To be honest, we would have stayed with food only until we had some stability in the system and really understand, understood what our processors could handle. We see some glass, uh, but I wouldn't say that it's uh, at a problematic level. You had talked about introducing the every other week garbage collection at the same time collecting food scraps. What was the kind of tonnage or volume change that you saw in terms of reduction of organic out of the garbage? And your question was, uh, what was the uh, impact on the volume collected as a result of that change? Volume or by tonnage? Yeah, um, uh, certainly there, there was an increase in, in volume, um, but I think it's kind of tough to isolate what, what that was and, and what it was due to, whether it was just the inclusion of food or increasing uh, collection frequency of organics, and then of course the impact of dropping garbage collection to every other week. So kind of three, three factors that could have influenced that, but certainly garbage went down, organics went up. Thank you. 